Last session, you joined the Marigard Academy. In doing so, you met a few interesting NPCs by the names of, firstly, Persh, the secretary, a.k.a. concierge, of the Marigard Academy. Then you met Maxwell, who helped you choose exactly what class you're going to be working to learn. Uh, then you met Callie Toothspring, a halfling <laughs> evocation wizard student. Uh, shortly after that, you met Tavernac, the brass dragon and the wizard instructor. Um, then you met Halluel Halifeth. Halluel Halifeth. Uh, colloquially goes by Hal, unless people actually listen to him. Um, who is a high elf conjuration wizard student. Uh, shortly after that, you decided to go on a small task to earn a little bit of coin, where you uh, ventured out into the Allen Forest and you found Grizz, a kobold, who is sleeping in some brush. <laughs> uh, you offered him a ration, who then helped you find your way to the oak trees where you might find a briar heart the reason you were there. Uh, you found four briar hearts, but you failed to collect them as your attempts to sever them ended in their destruction, unfortunately. Uh, you were then rescued from your situation by Grizz, who, as the days had gotten darker, emerged from his bush and found you seated in the oak grove, frustrated at your failure to collect briar hearts. Uh, after asking him for some help, he attempted to remove a briar heart and was successful. So you returned with that briar heart. You earned 15 gold pieces from that, went back to the academy, had dinner, spoke more with Callie, and that is where we ended the session. We will skip ahead a little bit and say that you take a long rest in your room okay. in the dormitory. So go ahead My and solo room because I'm just so smart and picked the right one. Yes, well done. Thank I'm you. very impressed. My first test passed. Uh, once you've completed a long rest. I have. Do you think Lorna would wake up on time? Yes. Okay. Uh, you're confident about that, it seems. I, I am. Okay, so Lorna would wake up on time, so when Lorna is awake and perhaps getting ready to begin her day, there would be a knock at her door, and you would hear, Lorna! I'm just checking to make sure you're awake in there. Oh, yes, I'll be right there. One second. She's going to give a cursory look at her room. Everything is where she put it, assumingly. Sure. Is there anything that is out of place? No. Okay. She takes one moment to go to the locker at the foot of her bed. She'll open it, see what she put inside, and see that it's still there. Okay. Is it? Yes. She'll shut the, shut the locker, lock it, and go to the door to open it. Uh, standing outside, you would see the familiar halfling, Callie, uh, looking up at you. And she would simply just be like, I just didn't want you to be late for your first day. Uh... Tabernacle hates it when we're late. I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. I'll see you Let's in the go. class. Oh, yeah. If you're ready. Well, I'm, I'm ready to go. All right. Uh, and she turns and begins heading up the stairs up the tower to Tabernacle's classroom. Mm -hmm. One moment, please. The wizarding classroom is exactly as you remember it, with high shelves full of tomes and scrolls and all sorts of small jars filled with various components. It is an attractive room and one that smells exactly as you hope it would for a wizard sanctuary. The sounds of Tabernacle uh, getting himself together can be heard as you can hear him almost grumbling in quiet murmurs to himself, all the way down in his lair on the far side of the room. Uh, Callie looks at you and says he likes it if we wait up here so just find a seat it'll be up in a moment he's going to come up here yes is he 
You'll find it. Uh, okay, I suppose that's more fun. Of course. Uh, what, how many seats are there? What's the layout look like? There's many. Uh, there are many tables amongst the various shelves. Uh, each of the tables has what look like six, almost like dining chairs, set to each one. Uh, and Callie sits down on the far left one and pulls out all of her books and tomes and scrolls. Uh, and they are cast all over the table. <laughs> immediately, in a matter of moments, she has spread herself out on one of the tables. I'll pick, I'll pick my own table, but nearby, but and I'll place everything in her typical neurotic fashion where everything is at 90 degree angles and laid out okay. with, a, <laughs> with a, a care and excessiveness to it. Fantastic. And as kind you of, are getting it's ready... It's a key to her mind that this is an aspect of control that she requires. Sure. As you are getting ready, the door opens again and Hallowell Halifef enters the room, uh, his own satchel. Uh, he's hustling to open it as he enters the room, and he says, Oh, thank goodness, I'm not late. Uh, no. Dora, if I remember. It's a pleasure. Good morning, Hallowell. Uh, he just kind of nods at Callie and then goes and sits down <laughs> at the far of the table, the third table, basically. So it, g- it goes from left to right, Callie, you, Hal. Um... As Hal has set his own satchel down and begins to open it, you hear, coming from the lair down the stairs, you hear, I'll be up in just a moment. Uh, why don't you show me a perception check? Oh, sure. I'm good at those. I know you are. I'm good at these as this character. In this case, 19. Um, the room is, as you remember it, uh... His voice sounded as though it was coming from a little bit farther down than you think possible. And that seems confusing to you. However, the confusion kind of remedies itself when you see there is a... Well, maybe middle-aged man wearing very wide spectacles climbing the stairs. Uh, And he is completely balded on the top with a maybe like a bit of unfortunate brown hair uh, just below the bald spot. Um, He looks fairly petite, um, but his eyes are the color of brass. And as he steps onto the main floor with the rest of you, he says, Good morning. I am pleased to see you've all made it in time. And he's looking at you as he says it. There is a brief, brief moment where Lorna uh, can't stop herself from thinking, you can transform into a human and that's the, uh, it's a, it's a visage you, you don, huh? But she, as soon as the, the thoughts enter her brain, she tries to yank them back because she knows he can glean surface thoughts. Yes, he can. So why don't you go <laughs> ahead and roll, uh, this is going to be basically a wisdom check to try and okay. control your thoughts and not to think that too loudly. All right. Oof. A seven. Okay. I did this to myself. You did. Uh, he, you kind of see the corner of his mouth quirks up a little, uh, <laughs> And he just continues walking up to the center of the room. And in your mind, you hear, There is a story behind everything, my girl. I look forward to hearing it, sir. Now, he says that aloud, I am pleased to resume our lectures from the rest of the week. But first, I must pick on the new student a little bit. Yeah. Lorna, how educated would you say you were before you came here? I think I can hold my own. Can you perhaps describe for me what the weave is? The, it's the essence of magic. It's the, the threads of the tapestry of our reality. In layman's terms, that is very well put. 
I will accept that for now. As you grow and learn new spells under my tutelage, you will learn that the weave is so much more. In the meantime, I have a task for you. What is the farthest you've gone in your life? Um, a distance? Mm hmm From where I was born? Yes. Here, sir. Right. How far is that? An ocean's worth. I see. Have you... Perhaps ventured into another plane. I have not had the pleasure to do so yet. Perfect. Then today will be a very exciting experience for you. Oh boy. Here at the Marigot Academy, while you are learning the means to become a mercenary, a professional, you will go on what we call free agencies. In other words, tasks, where you are assigned a small group, or assigned to a small group, that will handle a task, whether it be something as simple as finding a little bit of information, or something as dangerous as slaying a dangerous foe. The point of these free agencies is to Establish your strengths and weaknesses in a hands-on environment. How do you feel about that? I'm ready to prove myself. I was hoping you would say that. Uh, and from the other table here, Callie say, I said the same thing as well. <laughs> I look at Callie to glean whether it ended well or not for her. There's like a moment of eye contact, and then Callie just she kind of gives you a shrug. <laughs> Thanks, Callie. Hmm. Uh, Tabernak uh, turns, and he like begins like all of a sudden what wasn't there before is now a very large blackboard, uh, and he begins marking on it with a chalk. Just. <laughs> And he says, Your task will be simple. There is a ruin in the Shadowfell. What do you know of the Shadowfell? Uh, it's dark, sad, incredibly dangerous, and just being there sucks the essence of your life from you. A little exaggerated, it seems. Mostly from books, sir. I realize it is named the Shadowfell, but it is not actually much darker than our world is now. However, some writers prefer to take a flavor with their language. You will find your thoughts become darker as you are there. Those who are weak-willed can even be driven to end their own lives simply from staying there too long. Oh. That is not likely to happen, as you're only going to be there for a short period of time. Well, most likely. And he continues writing on the chalkboard. Uh, and you see he's kind of illustrating what looks like a a map, almost. Uh, he seems to be drawing out what looks like a very square construct. And then, apart from that, it's he's, like, showing, like, angles of approach and also, like, different vistas and things like that. He seems... It's actually very well drawn as he's doing this. After a long pause, he says, One of our other agents... A full professional recruit of the Marigot Academy recently were sent to investigate these ruins. 
They have come back. They are safe and sound. However, they have left something of importance at their campsite. And I figured what better for a simple free agency than to send a few of our recruits into the Shadowfell so they can look upon the world in a darker light and see what they can learn from it. Now, as it is your first day on the job, Lorna, you will report to Persh, who will assign you... You see, he thinks for a moment. I think two comrades will do nicely. He will assign you two comrades, and then you will report to Amilla Dawn, the sorceress instructor, and she will send you on your merry way. An exciting opportunity, sir. I can't wait. Good, because you're going now. Now, now. Right now. Gather up your things. Okay. Um, <laughs> Lorna will stand and dismantle the careful order she has brought to this desk. Stow her things. Look at Callie and Hallowell. Like uh, Callie thinking. goes like, like a big thumbs up and Hallowell just <laughs> nods. Oh, and, just me. Uh, and Tavernex says, oh yes, they've already performed their free agency this week, so... Oh, of course. You are dismissed, Lorna, and I look forward to hearing of your success. Thank you, sir. She will depart. Okay. And on that note, you head out into the tower, heading down toward the main lobby. Just a moment. What are some thoughts going through Lorna's head as you're leaving? Uh, wow, I cannot wait to go to a new plane. I've, that's kind of on my bucket list. I was thinking more like the Feywild or <laughs> it, really anywhere that isn't the Shadow Fell, but the beggars can't be choosers, and it's pretty much the furthest away I can get from my past. I hope I don't die. Okay. Uh, hold on. Are you trying to quell those at all? quell her thoughts yeah trying to hide it she uh after gaining the information that tabernak can glean surface thoughts she within a radius of probably 100 meters she'd probably do her best to remember to withhold okay surface thoughts uh then give me another wisdom check okay she she wants to be a more private person but uh, it's hard when you're professor could read your mind it is hard when your professor can read your mind come on lorna okay great the fact that you are going to the Shadowfell, which you have read to be a very dangerous place is making things it's a little distracting it's hard to keep those surface thoughts underneath a mask but Tabernak doesn't say anything. He doesn't stop you. You don't hear any other voices in your head. And you continue out into the main hall. Soon enough, you're in the main room with Persh, who is doing paperwork, because it seems as though he's always doing. As you arrive, he looks up and says, Hey! What? How can I help you? Uh, good morning, Persh. Tabernak sent me down here to partner with some alumnus. Uh, right. Oh, yes. Uh, you're on a free agency today, right? Um, okay. Let's see who I've got on the docket. He said two. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I need you to roll me a d4. Okay. One. Okay, and roll me a d6. Two. Hmm. Uh, he picks up a fairly new-looking 
box. Uh, and he picks, he pulls out like a blue stone from it. Roll me an arcana check. Okay. Or a history check. I'd allow either. They are both equally good. I'll do arcana. Okay. Just rolling. Not great, but I think I have a good modifier. Your history allows you to know what this is. Uh, you've read about these. You probably have seen one in, say, a noble's quarter. It is a sending box. Mm -hmm. uh, he picks up a blue stone and he speaks into it and you hear him say uh treat uh, do I have it correct that Sagona is free today uh, and you hear uh yeah what do you need her right now oh if you could send her on down we've got a free agency that she's just been signed up for right uh give her five minutes he says, he like, purse like sets down the blue stone and make, like makes a note. Uh, and then he continues looking through papers. I need you to roll me another d4, please. Okay. Another one. Reroll. A three. three. Okay, roll me a d6. Three. Four. Oh boy. Uh, okay. This time, Persh goes. Uh, he gets uh, up. That's uh, not a good and sign. And he goes toward, and he like takes a few steps over to the selection room, and you hear him go, "Hey, Maxwell," and you hear him say, "Yeah." Is um, is Skona in today? And you hear Maxwell say, "Yeah, she's off duty." Could you get her? She's just been signed up for a free agency. Uh, and then Persh emerges, and you see Maxwell go across the hall through a door that you didn't even see. It just suddenly seems to be visible to you, as though though it's still very well hidden in the shadow. Uh, and he goes through it and goes downstairs, and he says, All right, uh, your agency party will be with you in a moment. And he sits back down at the desk and resumes paperwork uh sorry did you say sedona is one of them uh he looks up and with a shuffle of paper he says right uh sedona a cleric recruit and skolna a skolna yep a rogue recruit okay uh, sorry are they graduates or are they no they're, they're oh, students they're... just like oh, you okay. Great. I just sit. Is up. there, okay? Is there is there a chair? <laughs> he points behind you at like the long. There's two long benches along each wall in the main hall. Uh, this feels like a shabby introduction. She's going to stand, back straight, hands linked behind her back. Uh, she's she was raised with proper manners. There, it doesn't take long. There is a rustle of, what sounds like chain mail. Uh, and coming down the hall from the left, opposite the way that you came from, you see a dwarf appears. Uh, she has bright blonde hair and crystal clear blue eyes. And she has a really imposing looking mace hanging from her belt and a shield that is bigger than her back. Uh... And as she emerges into the room, uh, she looks up at Persh. Uh, this is what she looks like. You can highlight over her. Ooh. And she says, Skona Row, reporting for duty. Uh, and Persh glances over and says, Right, you're with uh, Lorna? Yes. You two are doing a free agency together? I will turn to the female dwarf and give a very polite bow uh, she basically smiles at you um, and she says where I'm from only royalty do the bowing <laughs> where are you from uh, across the pond trident I, I've, I've heard but I've never been I've never had the pleasure it sounds like a beautiful place. It's a shy hole. 
Oh. Uh, and she just kind of smiles at you as you <laughs> look a little bit taken aback. I'm Lorna. And where are you from? Fuck, I never got my story straight, she thinks to herself. <laughs> Kao. Kao. Well, that kind of explains that, doesn't it? All right. Uh, of, <laughs> just thinks to herself, does it? Lots of nobility around those parts. Uh, and as she says that, uh, you hear there's footsteps uh, coming up the stairs. And they seem out of time, because you look over and Maxwell has already opened the door. And you realize you just didn't hear him. And the footsteps you hear are still coming up the stairs. Uh, and who emerges is a very purple tiefling woman. Um, she's wearing dark leathers, and that's what she looks like. Oof. And as she emerges, I will highlight them for the video. There's Sagona, and there's Skulna. Uh, they both... I'm sorry. Maxwell just kind of nods at Persh and then goes back into the selections room. And Persh looks over at the tiefling and says, Skolna! Skolna, my cakes. And then Skolna just nods. And Persh says, You're on a free agency with Lorna and Sagona here. Lots of S names. I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> and Skolna just seems to shrug and then approaches. Um, and Sagona says, I've seen you around before. And Skona just shrugs again. Um, talkative. <laughs> she just looks at you. I didn't say that out loud. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lorna has far better manners than I do. She would also replicate the, the polite half bow. Okay. Uh, when you do a half bow, she does like this awkward little... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then Sagona says, All right, who are we supposed to report to? Do we know? Hey, Parsh! Oh, yes, uh, the sorcerer's instructor. Uh, S uh, sorry, I forgot her name. Parsh, without looking up, says, Amila Dawn. Down Amila. this hall to the right. Second, yes. sto second door. Y yes, we're going to the Shadowfell. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. I'll lead the way, and okay. when I do so, I look back at the two other women and I say, have either of you been to the Shadowfell before? Uh, Skola just shakes her head, and and Zagona says, no. Is it, is it dangerous? Um, from what I've read, yes, but the longer you spend there, the worse it gets, and hopefully we don't spend too much time there. Sounds like my dinner table. Uh... I'm learning a lot about you, Sagona. Well, that's good. I'm not trying to hide anything. Oh, I didn't, know, didn't think you were. Um, quick question. You're a cleric student, aren't you? Oh, uh, hi. Is, I, I'm not really sure on the etiquette here. Is it rude to ask who you follow? She, like, taps at the symbol in the middle of her chest. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Uh, roll me your religion. Okay. You see the symbol is four parallel, jagged, waving lines. You are pretty sure that's a symbol of Nier. Nier? Who you think is maybe the god of storms? I guess uh, Tridonian, right? Aye. Good eye on you. Well, I've got to have something going for me, don't I? I like to keep things shocking. <laughs> Skolna, you can see her like roll her eyes, but she doesn't say anything. Uh, uh, Lorna briefly considers asking if she can talk, but that's she would deem that rude, so she doesn't. Just accepts that this is how this first is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she remains quiet, mm -hmm. uh, and then you lead the way. Uh, the sorcerer door is ostentatious it is not in poor taste it's not gauche or anything like that but it is ornately hand carved and you see that the door the edges of it are finely almost like paisley with all these small wooden intricate 
carvings that run around the outskirt of the door. Uh, and it has a very fine, but not super bright, it's just like a matte finished bronze doorknob. I would knock. Uh, there is a brief pause before you hear uh, come in. Sorry, I was putting my collar on my cat. No she would enter. The sorcerer's classroom looks more like an auditorium. There is a high stage, and then there are all sorts of uh, these rounded seats that face toward it. And you can see there are two students that are currently on the sorcerer stage, and they are they've they've stopped as you've interrupted them. But you think they were maybe sparring or dueling, but each of them has a wand in hand, um, and they're just waiting. And you see this woman, who has auburn hair, who is clearly an elf. She's very tall, and she looks over at you, having entered, and she says, "How can I how can I help you?" We were sent here by Persh for a free agency. Right. I do remember Tabernark mentioning that. Uh, you're off to the Shadowfell Inn, and I remember... And she, like, holds up a finger to the, the students that are on the stage, and she says, You two, in just a moment, we'll get back to it. And she goes to her desk, and she begins shuffling through pages. Until finally, she comes across one, and she reads it over, and she says... Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, you're to be teleported near the Austinian ruins? 300 feet by two. Sun. And she's like m m mumbling to herself. And she says, right, you three, come here. Uh, before you send us, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're the one doing that. What are we getting? I don't know. We okay. <laughs> We're being sent to go get something that was left behind at a campsite. There's nothing on this paper about that. Great. Okay. Thanks. Uh, and then uh, she, like, rolls the paper up. <clears throat> and she says, uh, Right. Kana, you're watching the three. And you see a... What looks like a air genasi. Just kind of stand up from her seat and just nods. And then she says, Right, you three? You ready? Uh... I suppose so. Uh, has Lorna ever been teleported before? Um, probably not. She went all around her home country, but she, her, her family was very particular about letting her go further away than that. Okay. Uh, in that case, this is very strange. Oh boy. It feels as though every molecule of your being is suddenly pressed through a strainer. It's like a weird pressure that goes from your feet all the way up to your head and it almost hurts. It doesn't quite. It's just a little bit of discomfort. And then the smells are different. The world is different to you. It is cold and dull and you can't help but instantly feel as though you don't know what you're looking for, and why would they even bother sending you here? It's pointless. And you look up, you see Sagona and Skolna are looking at you, uh, and you see the sorcerer instructor is just has just taken her hand off of you, and she just kind of folds her arms and says, Right, I'll be here once you're finished. You're going to wait for us. I can't leave you here alone, can I? I do appreciate that. Uh, Laura looks much more relieved than she did a minute ago. And she just kind of... She's folded her arms, and she looks around and she says, Drew, your place, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I'm sure it has its charm to some. Um, what are we looking... We don't even know what we're looking for. Uh, she looks between her two companions. Um... Sagona and Skolna are looking at you, and Sagona says, Well, what did your instructor say about this free agency? Campsite? Mm. S somebody from the Marigard was staying here, left, and something important was left behind at this campsite. 
Maybe we should look for a campsite then. That is a brilliant direction, Sagona. I think that is where we should start. Are either of you good at tracking? <laughs> I'm alright at it. Skona says. <sighs> Slorna just blinks. Brilliant. Um <laughs> uh, please leave the way, Skolda. She just kinda shrugs and begins looking around, looking for signs of footprints. Uh I will roll for Skolna. Can I help her? I can I'm just looking for Are you proficient each shape in survival. No. Then no. I'm okay. <laughs> Skolna begins walking, uh, and you notice she has a very bright purple tail as well. Uh, it's She seems ostentatiously colored for attempting to hide in the shadow, but her dark leathers do seem to at least cover up the differences. And as she is leading the way forward, you are walking through what looks like a shipwreck, but there's no water here. There's mist that constantly dashes out across the ground as if there was recently a snowfall, but there's no snow, and it's just... it's an odd environment to be stuck in. Skolna leads the way between the shipwreck until she reaches what looks like the low point of some foothills, and she says, Footprints vanish here. As in, whoever was making them dematerialized? Or they could fly. Well, at their walk, they could fly. She Sorry, says. that was more for me. I was thinking out loud. Um, what did the footprints look like? Big, small, multiple people, one person? She looks down at it, and you can see she thinks for a moment. Uh, and then she holds up two fingers two people medium okay good job Skolna that's the first step uh getting to here how about you Sagona what do you what do you got Sagona looks at you and she says for this not much uh I can hit things I can heal you I th yeah, I think your connection to Nier will be invaluable if we encounter trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, can I just scan the general surroundings? I'm looking for things that would jump out at me as not belonging in a shadowy sad place. When she sees you're intending to do something like that, she says, Nier's with you. And she, like, touches you on the shoulder as she says it. And you have guidance. Yay! Thank you, Sakana. Is this an investigation yes. or a perception? Yes, this is an investigation. Take I'll take it. Decent. An 18. Oh, why don't we put, use the D4? Might as well. Go ahead. Yeah. A 22. <laughs> okay. You're looking at these hills, and... You realize what the mist is. It's cold, so it didn't strike you this immediately, but it's a pale ash that seems to spread all across the landscape. It's it's thick, and as you're walking, you see that your own footsteps are clearly visible behind you. Which is likely why Skolno was able to track what she could. It is easy to track things in ash. Now... As you're looking and you're peering up at these low foothills, you hear something that alarms you. Uh -huh. It doesn't sound great, but it sounds as though the shifting of something heavy through the ashen dust. You just hear this... Uh, and over one of the low foothills, you can see a cloud of ash slowly rise and then fall back down. As in something was moving and stopped moving? Yes. Okay. So I'll hold up my hand to indicate we stopped moving. 
There's something up there. How far away do I get the sense? Maybe about a hundred feet. I don't think whatever it is saw us yet. But there's always time for that. Uh, I look at Skolna. I feel reasonably comforted that she is a quiet person. <laughs> and I look at Sagona and I feel much less so. What do you guys think? Head on? Avoidance? Uh, at the same time, Sagona says, I'm all for head on. And Skolna says, I'd like to stay quiet. Right. Sagona, I think we should do our best to avoid conflict. The dwarf kind of pouts a little, but she agrees. I'm glad you agree. I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to, but I think we should at least try. Go ahead and roll me stealth. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I don't think this will give me anything, but Lorna is going to, to walk behind Skolda and try to replicate as best she can her movement. Uh, okay. Are you proficient in stealth? No. Uh, because but I'm very good study. I'm going to roll Skolna's stealth, who is great at it. Um, and based on how she rolls, I will determine if you get a bonus or not. Skolna rolled a 19. I'll say you get a situational bonus of plus two. Woo. So Thanks. go ahead and roll your stealth. Now, Sagona does not actually have disadvantage on stealth, but she's not a stealthy person. No, neither am I. <laughs> so you rolled an 11, and Sagona uh -huh. will roll her stealth. Uh, I may have misled you a little bit. She's wearing a breastplate, so she's not actually a disadvantage. Um, but she rolled a 9. Okay. We rolled the same thing. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. But okay. I have my plus 2 because I was trying to mimic yes. Skolna. So... You both, you crouch, you watch as Skolna, actually. She seems to duck down, and she reaches underneath the ash and dust on the ground, and she seems to gather some of it up and around her arms and legs as she crouches down. And the effect is she seems to mold into the landscape around you. Do you do that, too? Oh, yes. Lorna would just shamelessly defer to the master at work and repeat the movement as when, precisely as possible. When you do do what Skolna did, she kind of glances behind herself at you and sees that you're mimicking it, and she just kind of she gives a little smirk. Uh, and then Sagona uh, has crouched down as well, and you hear this clunk as her mace bounces off a rock. But you are staying still and you are hiding. And whatever it is that is moving... You see the ash cloud rise up again and then fall. It seems as though something on the foothills ahead of you is moving beneath the ash. And occasionally it emerges. And what you see is a strange creature. It looks, it moves as though it doesn't have m like a skeleton. Uh, but it is a humanoid shape. So it seems as though every time it emerges, you see four limbs. You see arms and legs and a face looking about. But there are no eyes in those sockets. The limbs are not moving naturally. And every time it emerges, it looks more as though it's coming up for air than it is to search. Roll me an arcana. Okay. Ha 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 ha. What you are looking at is an undead creature known as a boneless. It has been animated perhaps centuries ago by necromantic magic, and then the controlling force is gone, and now the boneless just wanders mindlessly searching for life to end. It is a common creature here in the Shadowfell. Sometimes they're in gathers and packs. Sometimes they're by themselves. They have no intelligence to them. They act entirely on the instincts set in by the necromantic magic. With a 25, it seems as though you found a chapter about the boneless. So you know what they do and what they are. I bet, you know, I think Lona would have a, a peculiar 
inclination towards necromantic things even before she learned yeah her family's history i think that she was naturally drawn to it which uh d deeply disturbs her now but she retained that information you also know with a 25 bonuses are not remarkably perceptive but they are resistant to bludgeoning and poison damage lorna would in a very low whisper recite pretty much like she was reading off the paragraph once more from the book that she initially read it from. With your high passive perception, do you watch as Skulna was thumbing a vial that she kind of frowns and tucks away? <sighs> Don't and waste then it. Sagona next to you says, Right, so what's our plan? Are we just letting it go by or are we going to kill it? Well, it's kind of like how there are a lot of rats on the primaterial plane. This is like the Shadowfell's rat, so you kill it one, a million more. Right, but if we're but trying to place. search this area, it might make things difficult. It's true. Uh, let's see if that's the only one. If it's the only one, I think we can take it. Can I just perceive, because I did read that they, they can coalesce, but they don't have a habit to do so. That just happens sometimes. Roll perception. <laughs> with a 22 you're looking over the foothills for any other signs of ash moving it's a clear sky even though it is grey it's well lit and as you're looking up you do see quite a ways away a creature flying you don't know what it is it looks more, a little more than a speck in the distance but other than that you don't see any other signs of movement or life. Okay. All right. Sagona, I think I'm with you on this. If we kill it, we might have a better time searching the area. Fantastic. But who here has range? How define range? More than up close and personal. <sighs> and Lorna eyes her mace. Uh, you see Sagona kind of frown. And Skolna holds up a hand, and you see a hand crossbow that you didn't even see before. Lorna briefly thinks, why is she keeping that? Uh, brilliant. Um, I have a bit of range, too, up to 120 feet. Sagona, Sagona says, I'll just hold the line in case it rushes us. And Skolna okay, says, that's a good idea. I can hit it from here. How far away is it? Uh, since you, as you've been talking and watching it move, it's now about 70 feet away. Oh, psh, easy. I think so. Okay. Sagona, you hold the line. Me and Skolna will attack simultaneously. If we're good at our aim, we might just take it down without a fuss. Skolna nods, and Sagona, you watch as she draws the mace, and she just kind of hefts it, letting the head hang low. Uh, and her other hand begins to glow with electricity. And she says, Ready when you are. Okay. Lorna will look at Skolna, and she will lift her own hand, and in, like, the area around her own hand, a, like, a sickly green mist manifests like a glove, and then it okay. gets bigger and clawed, and she's going to cast Chill Touch just eject it 120 feet is its okay. range so 70 feet is fine okay so we're gonna roll initiative here but first let me place you guys uh kind of in a rough approximation of how you are so sagona skolna sagona's in front and then where are you at the bottom lorna and then this boneless man eh, he's up here Ew. Yeah, they're gross. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll initiative for me. Okay. Oh my god, a natural one. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even though I was ready for it, this is her first like real fight. To be fair, it is. Uh, and that you do have a surprise round. Um, so on the surprise round, terrible. you are going to make your spell attack. And Skolna is going to make her crossbow attack. 
which is going to be at disadvantage because it is at her maximum range. But it could be worse. All right. Let me roll this at disadvantage. Okay, Skolna hits with a 13. Uh, roll your spell attack. Skolna was at disadvantage? Yeah, because it was out of her max. Her minimum range was shorter, but it's within her maximum. Gotcha. Um, it does so mean she does back. not get uh, sneak attack, though. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay. So my roll to hit. Oh, no. Alert is really nervous. With a 10. A 10 does not hit, I'm afraid. No, so, sir. As you are preparing to, to take aim, Skolna's bolt sinks into the boneless, and you just hear this, and it drops. And as it does, your chill touch just right oh. over the creature. Shit. Um, and Sigona says, right, right, let them come for me. And she's like holding an action. Uh, and as that happens, uh, and we dive into actual combat here, did we really all roll that low? For you really it? all roll that oh low. Oh my god. <laughs> Even the rogue rolled a six? Yes, the boneless does go first. Uh, but you're 70 feet away, which means that it is going to spend its whole its turn and its action closing the distance. And it will end up 10 feet away from you all, which does put it in range for Sagona's held action, which is nice. lightning lure. All of a sudden, this bolt of lightning... <laughs> out toward the boneless. And I need to roll strength save for the boneless. Not got any bones. How strong can he be? Pretty strong. As the lightning... Oh, it succeeds. As the lightning closes up and around on the boneless, you watch as it just seems like its body just... just sinks through the lightning and gets away from it. It's awful to watch. Uh, and now it's Skullmas' turn. Uh, actually, we've been through the surprise round, so now it's Skolna's turn. Uh, Skolna is going to not say a word, uh, and is going How to... How unlike her. ...is going to dip to the side and fire again, but this time not at disadvantage. Yes, how unlike her. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty quiet. Oh, with a natural four, Skolna misses. Uh, Oof. And then she will use her cunning action to dive into the ash and hide. <laughs> uh, and she hides for a 12. Okay. Level one, guys. Level one, Sagona's turn. Sagona <laughs> uh, says, uh, as the lightning lure fails, and it's now her turn again, she says, Right! Well, that's enough of that! And she runs forward, and she's going to bash it with her mace. Uh, it seems as though she forgot you mentioned that they are resistant to bludgeoning. And she hits it with a 13. Oh, boy. Hira, she hits it. And the mace does sink into the creature's flesh, but it doesn't seem to do very much at all. Okay. And the boneless just and begins to look like it's going to try and uh, wrap itself around. Sagona. I have the visual of like someone open palm slapping a waterbed. It's literally the same, <laughs> but it's made of flesh. It's your turn. Oh god! <laughs> the first thing that uh, Lorna will do is say, "Sakoda, bludgeoning doesn't work against these things," and she's going to. I'm right. You said that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna faint to the left to keep us spaced out. Okay. She's going to go about there, and she's going to try her uh, chill touch again, hoping... To hit this time? Uh, keep him steady! <laughs> Please! And she's going to try again. Okay. Go ahead and roll your spell attack. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> A nine missed, unfortunately. Yes, it does, uh, sir! It's just as the struggle between Sigona and this boneless continues, the boneless wrapping its limbs up and around Sigona's and she's tearing them away, trying to swing at it again. It's just too difficult to get a clear shot and you miss. 
uh, Lorna's hand is also probably shaking like mad because perhaps this is a horrific circumstance to be in and it's her first real fight and it's uh, an undead entity that's just a big pile of terrifying it is awful the boneless is going to lurch forward and attempt to slam Sagona with its body I said to attack why won't it do it you okay. don't have to if you don't want to I have to okay there we go uh, it rolled a natural one so Ooh. it actually it it's weight being manipulated by Sagona, who's very strong, it lurches to the side, and you watch as the bonus just <laughs> falls completely <laughs> flat on the ground. Uh, it will use half its movement to get back up, and it will try again. It gets two attacks. Uh, a 17 will hit Sagona. Can I use something I've never used before? Sure. Silvery barbs. Okay, so you give me disadvantage. I have to roll again. I do. That is a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Two in a row? So again, is it? it's lurched up onto its feet and tries to hurl itself up at it. And there's a moment where you can, you almost have this vision of it wrapping itself up and around Sagona, locking her up. And you just, you deny that reality. And instead, you, Sagona just reacts with a, ah! and knocks it aside. And the boneless poof, falls on the ground the other way. And is prone again. And I'm going to give the advantage to Skull now. Okay. Because uh, snack attack. Yeah. Right? Snack attack. I'm going to see if Skullna if it's <laughs> if her stealth of twelve beat uh, this creature's perception. Hold on. It did not. So you did give her advantage, though. So is she <laughs> she emerges from the ash. This the white powder just. <laughs> flaking out of her purple hair and she just <laughs> fires the crossbow uh, now the boneless is prone so this is a straight roll but it does get sneak attack because Sagona is within melee let's see if she hits that is a natural 17 for a 22 to hit <gasps> which totally hits okay uh, damage on the crossbow that's 6 plus 2d6 from sneak attack. 2. <laughs> she deals 8 points of damage to the boneless. As the second arrow sinks into the side of the boneless, you watch as this thick black ichor just begins to pour out of it, and you hear this <laughs> as it is writhing in pain. One of its limbs is no longer functioning. And Skolna looks up at you, and she just kind of nods before diving behind a rock and trying to hide again. <laughs> uh, that's much better. She rolled a 21. So, she is hidden. Uh, Sigona's turn. Sigona is going to try and hit it with another lightning lure because you reminded her the mace doesn't work. <laughs> so I roll a strength save for the boneless. The lightning lure lashes up and around the boneless, but again, its strange, floppy exterior just <laughs> makes it impossible for the lightning lure to get a purchase. And she says, I cursed you, you foul undead piece of shite! And she can't, <laughs> she fails, unfortunately. It's your turn. Oh, Sagona, you're doing your best. Oh, it's, it's okay, <laughs> I haven't hit it either, Sagona. Um, <laughs> and then Please I'm going change to... that! It's really, it smells awful! <laughs> Sorry! I'm going to try chill touch again, it's got to okay. work. It's gotta work. She tries, she lifts up her hand. It's still shaking, so she uses her, her left hand to cup the elbow of her right to keep it steady, and she's gonna try to cast it again. Okay. 14. It's AC is 12, so you are. <sighs> <sighs> okay. All right. Roll damage. Hopefully it's not immune to necrotic damage. It is not immune to necrotic damage. Either. And it doesn't regenerate hit points. It does not. You roll... I don't know if it can, but it doesn't. <laughs> you deal three points of damage to the boneless. Eek. It is looking awful as huge swaths of skin on the boneless just necrify and fall away. It is disgusting to see. Uh, anything else on your turn? Uh... She's just gonna say, "You got this, Sagona. You're you're gonna kill it. I just know it." 
Uh, it's now the boneless's turn. Uh, it's going to attempt. <laughs> it is going to attempt to attack one more time. It's going to try and slam Sagona. If it lands one of these, it can do stuff, but it can't seem to I don't land them. Want it to land anything. I know. That's a natural four. For, no, that's not going to hit. Uh, <laughs> so this time, it does actually get itself together and hurl both of its limbs in a woof, and Sagona just raises the shield and a woof, knocks it away. Uh, and then it will try again. Okay. That's a 16 to hit. It does hit. Sagona, suddenly, you watch as these gross, necrified limbs boom, slam into Sagona, and she is wrapped up. Uh, hold on a second. I gotta roll damage here. 1d4. Okay. Sagona takes five points of bludgeoning damage, and she is grappled. Uh, you hear her struggling beneath the limb. Not get it off me! <laughs> oh, fuck! Uh, it's now Skolna's turn, uh, who did successfully stealth. So she pokes out from behind the rock and just pew, shoots another bolt. Let's see how she do. Come on, roll the attack. It's giving me such a hard time. There we go. Uh, that misses, unfortunately. Oh, with guys. an 11. Level one. And then she, you just hear her say, shit, and duck back uh, behind another <laughs> rock. She, like, runs over here and will stealth. Okay. Uh, you see her tail just sticking out from behind the rock. <laughs> it ain't easy being purple. <laughs> it isn't. Uh, it's now Sagona's turn, who, uh, in the struggle, she's going to just clap her hands together. Uh, dropping the mace on the ground in a thunderclap. Uh, the storm cleric doing everything she can to get this fucking undead thing off of her. Uh, let me roll that save. It fails. Okay. Uh, it is deafened, and it takes... Oh my god. Uh, okay. It is looking real, real bad. It's now your turn, Lorna. What do you do? Oh, sorry. I didn't have my push to talk. Is it wrapped around her? Uh, what does the layout look like? It's grappling her. So, it has, like, a limb wrapped up around her neck, and the other is down and around her leg. And so she can't move, but she's not, like, encompassed by it yet. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, get it off you. Uh, okay. <laughs> she's gonna run up. Okay. <laughs> yep, she's just gonna uh, reach out and grab its weird squishy flesh, and she's gonna cast Shocky Grasp on it. Okay. Roll your spell attack. It is not wearing metal. Uh, yeah. 17. 17 hits. I'm taking a page out of Sagoda's book. I gave it the old taser. Okay. It had two hit points left. <laughs> you destroy the boneless. How do you do it? Oh, shit. She just grabs it, and she sinks her fingers into its weird, squishy exterior. She's just closed eyes, screwed up face, looking away. And the lightning jolts through her fingertips, and it, like, does this weird... It goes throughout the whole creature's body, and it just, like quivers and shakes until it can't hold its form together anymore and it just ostensibly explodes it is messy and gross as dry <laughs> cracked <laughs> flesh just in all directions uh, and the boneless is destroyed uh, and Sagona reaches up and like pulls off a piece of rotten flesh that was on her neck and she just ah, oh, thank you and Lorna's like just still looking away there's like bits of it on her cheek she's just like oh god oh god I oh. <laughs> she's trying to come down from just the sheer horror of what just happened uh, peering up from behind the rock uh, Skolna just looks up and sees that it's dead and then she 
puts the crossbow away somewhere uh, and is approaching. And Sigona says, Right, next time we'll see maybe if Skulma's way is better. I never thought lightning would have a hard time grabbing a thing. Well, to be fair, it killed it. It did. Uh, and I took inspiration from you, so it was kind of like you killed it. And you watch as Sigona uh, oh, grips her medallion, and she just concentrates on where there's this huge bruise and mottled flesh on her neck, and she... Uh, and she heals it up with cure wounds. Okay. Oh, most of us came out of that pretty much unscathed, which I consider a success. Uh, me too. Ow. Uh, before I forget, <sighs> Lorna's gonna scan the skyline again for that speck she saw, just trying to keep tabs, see if it's still there, see if it's getting closer. Roll perception. Eh. You don't see it. Okay, um, still quiet, I think. <laughs> we should do that. Um, in case there's more, and I don't really want to do that again. Uh, let's look for a campsite, shall we? Right. And you see she regathers up her mace and slings her shield back up on her back. Uh, and Skolna just goes and pulls the arrows out of <laughs> the corpse flesh. Yes. Lovely place. Glad I came to visit. Skolna looks at you and she... Uh... What? I, I was being sarcastic. This place is horrible. She just nods. Uh, okay, how do you search for the campsite now that you don't have the threat of this boneless? Uh, do I remember how long, like, if Tabernacle mentioned how long ago the person was here, the Marigard uh, student? He didn't Mercury. mention. Shit. Uh, Lorna would, her first thought is look for just maybe the remnants of a fire made by a campsite, like, just... Okay. Drifting smoke. Roll investigation. Okay. Oh! With a 22, and without the threat of the boneless, you look around, able to stand a little taller without fear, and you see that over the foothills, there is a part of the foothill that crests downward, as if it's a cliff. And you see near that a slow drift of smoke. Okay. That's uh, promising. Or it's something horrible and we'll have to fight again. Lead the way. Okay. Or would you like me to? Well, uh, you're just so strong. <laughs> you're not wrong about that. And she no. like twirls the mace and then goes that way. Uh, you are walking for maybe, it's not far. It's only like a five minute walk when finally you crest the foothill and you see that there is a camp campsite. The fire's still lit, but it is nearly dead. There are what look like two tents that are... They look abandoned. They don't look like they've been tended to overnight. And as you crest and look at it, Sig Sigona says... Is this the right... Is this what we're looking for? Well, uh, we were brought to specific coordinates, told to look for a campsite. Uh, I can't imagine they would have put us completely off track. Okay. Uh, let's check it out then. And you see uh, she is a bit more wary now that she <laughs> has fought a creature that did a lot of damage to her. Right, How are you I, going to investigate this? I think we should be quiet. I would like to cast something that I think might help us find whatever it is we're looking for. If it was important, I'm going to assume it was magical. So I'm going to cast Detect Magic. Okay. There it is. You cast Detect Magic using a spell slot. You suddenly can see magical effects around you within 30 feet. You are not within 30 feet of the campsite yet, but as you approach it, 
Um, you see that there is a hint of magic that is standing out to you. The fire that is still burning is an illusion. Wait. I'm a little worried this might be a trap. And you hear uh, Sagona say, well, the best way to beat a trap is to set it off, isn't it? Uh, isn't disarming the trap. You hear Skolna from behind you say, yes. Right, why would you trigger the trap? It would just hurt you. And Sagona says, that's... Well, that's the dwarven way to do it. Fine, do it your way. Okay, well, I'm, I'm <laughs> bracing of all cultures here, but I would like to come out of this alive. Uh, Skolna, like, puts her hand on her shoulder and says, Let me look. You sure about that? Mm-hmm. Okay. You watch as Skolna, like, begins to quietly approach. Uh... She pulls a dagger from her belt and she begins to just stab it into the ash all around this campsite as she's walking near it. I'm going to roll an investigation for her to detect a trap. After what's like a good three minutes of her and just searching around this campsite, she looks up at you and she just shakes her head. No trap, huh? Okay. Uh, Sagona, let's go. All right, and she puts the mace on her shoulder and follows you. Lorna will approach carefully. She's still looking for anything that pings on her radar. In the illusion of the fire, you look at it. It doesn't seem quite right to you. Roll me a perception. Okay. <laughs> Natural 20. Okay. Yeah, the DC here was 20. So you video by I'm Very on edge. <laughs> um, you look down at this this campfire. The You know it's an illusion you're looking at, which lets you see past it just a little bit. I actually think with the tech magic, the DC would have been 15. Um, it doesn't matter. You see it. Kicked its ass. Within the illusion, in the fire, you see there is a small brass cylinder that sings of divination magic. Maybe that's what we're looking for. That's where Lorna will go to when she reaches the campsite. Okay. Yeah, you're basically, you know this fire isn't real. The smoke, as you look up, is clearly also an illusion. Uh, there is no heat coming from this campfire. She'll stick her hand in the flames. Okay. Try to retrieve what she sees. As you're reaching forward, you hear Sagona say, No, oh, wait! No, it's fine. It's just an illusion. Oh. <laughs> All right, then. That's why I thought as, it was a trap, but I think it's just disguising what was left here. As as you were. And she <laughs> seems to just look confused and shrug. You reach into the flames? I do. Okay. Do you grab the brass capsule? Capsule? I do. It's in your hand. doesn't weigh very much. Can I inspect it? Yeah. Roll me an investigation. Not bad. You see that this capsule, uh, it is covered in fine, ornate, arcane runes around one end of it. The cylinder clearly has uh, a division in the middle that you think you could twist apart. Um, but it feels like it's tightly screwed together. Like it would take some effort to take it apart if you wanted to. It rings of divination magic. I toy with the ends for a second, realize that I'm probably not the best person to open this. Like a pickle jar, so I hand it to Sigona and I say, could you twist this off, please? Hmm. Yeah. And she grabs it, and I'm gonna roll a strength check for her. She struggles with a moment, just and then finally, it, you hear the brass squeak, and it just, and she unscrews it, and then, she's got two ends of a brass cylinder. She looks down in it. Huh. She holds it out to you. There's a scroll in it. 
Oh, <laughs> that's what I was hoping for. She'll take it. Okay. Give it a look over. Roll me Arcana. Okay. Poop. The runes on this scroll are intricate. They're written in Draconic. Which, I speak Draconic. Which, even though you might speak Draconic, they are... Poop. It's like reading archaic Draconic, old language. You don't understand what the scroll is. Mm -hmm. Except that it might be division divination. Yeah, you get that. It's probably divination. Okay, if I had to wager, I'd bet this is what we were supposed to retrieve. But I don't think we should leave until we've combed the whole camp. Uh, Skolna shrugs, and Sigona says... All right, uh, I'll start over here then. Is there one tent? Is there There are two tents. Two tents because two footprints. Oh. The footprints probably stopped because they teleported out of here. Lorna says as she's thinking out loud. Um, she will go into one of the tents and investigate it. Roll investigation. I'm going to roll one for Sagona and one for Skolna. Oh my god, these terrible rolls. <laughs> Uh, within the tent, you see that it has been packed up. Um, there is an indentation. So the tent has like a canvas on the bottom. And beneath it, you know, is the ash. And you see there's an indentation where the bedroll was clearly pressed down into it. And as you're looking at it, you think to yourself, well, this seems like a waste of time. Why did we even bother coming here? And I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, what? Wisdom saving throw. Um, okay. The 14, you you shake it off. This weird fatiguing depression that was swallow, that was trying to swallow your thoughts. You push it away. And you do not succumb to the shadow fell's darkness. Oh yay. Is my detect magic picking up anything else around the camp, or was it just this item? It was just fire. it was just the fire and the cylinder. Okay. I'll poke my head out of the tent and say, Skolna? Sigona, did you find anything? Uh Skolna pokes out of the other tent and you see she's holding up a sheaf of what looks like ration jerky, and you see that she's chewing. Um, oh, great. <laughs> and Sigona just kind of appears out of the out of like this other side of the camp. And she says, nothing. Well, I'm comfortable. I think we found what we're looking for. Right. So now we go back and get pressed through magic again. It felt real awful. Uh, I'm sure we'll get used to it. It's better than walking back or finding some other way home. I guess. Are you feeling all right, Sagona? Just... This all feels real pointless, you know? Like, all we had to do is find a fucking, like, a cylinder and we put, ended up putting our lives on the line for a gross flesh monster? It just feels, I don't know, stupid. I'll, uh, put my hand on her shoulder and say, We did what we came here for. It's a terrible place. I know that. You did a great job. You've held your own against it. It would have killed me. <laughs> yeah, maybe it would have, huh? You're pretty scrawny. It's true. I've never been able to put on weight. We need to get you a sandwich. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, easily transportable is what I say. I guess. You could pick me up with one hand, couldn't you? This doesn't seem the place to try, but... <laughs> Why not? I know Probably I could. feel better. Do it. Without much warning, she seems to put a hand under your hip. Like, like a shoulder lift. And huh? tries to pick you up. <laughs> How much does Lorna weigh? I'd probably say 110 pounds max. She's tall, but she's slim. Without much effort, this stout dwarf cleric just whoop, and you are lifted. What? Up. <laughs> See, I told you. Hey, sure, there's not much to you, is there? What do you think that flesh monster would have done to me? Nothing good. And she sets you down. I Thank near, we were a bit together. 
Sagona, I'm glad you're with me right now. Uh, she kind of looks up at you and just winks. <laughs> Thank Parsh. It's a good pairing. And you too, Skolna. Skolna's like standing nearby, just. <laughs> and she offers you a piece of jerky. I'll take it. I'll consider that her way of saying, Me too. I think the same thing. Lorna's just telling herself that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. This is what having friends is, and she'll eat her jerky. <laughs> it's a little stale, but it tastes fine. Uh, there's a bit of ash in the cr in the little crannies, but you can brush it out easily enough. Yeah. Kind of comes with the territory. It's like having a cat. You're gonna have cat hair on everything. Um, after a moment of eating jerky, Sagona says, "Can we get out of here?" Yes, I think we should make haste. I don't really feel like tangling with another one of those skin monsters again. No. Oh. And she, like, begins to lead the way out. Mm-hmm. Follow right after her. As you make your way back down the hillside, you see that where Amilla was, there, oh, you don't see her, um, but you do see there is a clear pair of footprints that have not moved. She's just um, invisible. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't take much to notice because you knew where to look. Uh, and from the clear air, you hear, Right, so you done then? I think so. I think we got what we came here for. Perfect. Let's get out of this dismal fucking place. And she yeah. uh, says, You ready? Yes. Uh, there's a brief pause where there's like a hesitation, and then you feel as Sagona puts a hand on your shoulder, and you're just like, right, forgot about that. And then <laughs> Skolna puts her hand on Sagona, and then a moment passes, and then you find yourself back in the sorcerer's classroom. <sighs> it is welcome, and you realize just how cold you were, and you didn't even feel it. Now that you're back in the prime material plane, it's like a pressure is gone. It is relaxing, even though there is currently the sounds of two sorcerers attempting to duel and you see not everyone performs magic the same way you do. And you watch as this one sorcerer is doing all sorts of these acrobatic motions and then the air genasi that you saw earlier raises a hand and all of these magic darts that were flying toward her just <laughs> into a magical shield. And, wow. and the sorcerer instructor, Emila, says, Right, that's enough. That's enough of the sparring for today. Uh, you all know your assignments. Kana, you're going to speak to me after class. And you too. And she, like, points to the first sparring partners that they were first in there. They clearly are injured. She says, report to treat. You can, and he, she looks over at Sagona, and Sagona says, I'll, I'll take them. No problem. <laughs> uh... And then Sigona looks at you and says, Till next time, eh? I hope so. And she gives you a, like a pat on the shoulder. That's it almost stalks me over. Yeah, it's way too powerful. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, Careful, I bruise like a banana. You smell like one too as she's leaving. Is that a good. She raises an arm and just stiffs. Next to you, Skolna says, That was fun. I think so too, Skolna. I actually learned quite a bit about how to not be a loud bumbling idiot she just kind of nods and then she I leaves work together <laughs> some okay as you like she rounds the corner she just gives a thumbs up <laughs> over her shoulder wow there's like a warmth there she's like wow we're friends <laughs> <laughs> uh you have completed your first free agency you have a brass <sighs> cylinder with a scroll you cannot read in it what do you i do? do i would go to tabernacle Okay, you return. Fine. Spoils of conquest. You return to Tabernacle's classroom. As you do, you see Callie and Hal. Hal. Hal Lowell. You Excuse can't me. even say you it. Can't even. Uh, they are both working at their tables, and Callie looks up as you enter, and she says, "Hey, welcome back." Hi. Um... How did it go? She's, Laura's, she's got dust. She has dark hair, so the dust is like it looks oh, like yeah. she's prematurely graying, and there's just little bits of flesh monster. 
Oh, that looks up. disgusting. That was horrible, yes. I would never want to go again if I have the choice. Still, it's glad to see you're back. Well done. Uh, and I... she, like, gestures toward the balcony and says, I think Tabernacle's waiting for you? Is that unusual? No. Maybe a little. Yes. Okay. Yes. I think... You know he can read your mind, right? I've gathered through as, context clues. As you were leaving, I think he might have picked up on something that made him a little nervous. Or maybe concerned. It's hard to read. It's hard to read him. I, you don't think it was the fact that he was just sending me to the plane of sadness? He was like, oh, she might feel sad going there. Right, that's it. I'm sure that's it. Sure, that's it. Anyway, uh, go go report to him. You have to you have to return your your trophy, as it were. I'm she points just at wiggle the... the brass tube. <laughs> yeah, she points at it. Sure, um, I'll go find him. Uh, Tabernak is back in dragon form as he's back on his massive stage with all sorts of books and scrolls out in front of him. Uh, and he looks up at you as you enter the lair and he says, ah, Welcome back. I had faith you would do well. You I... are no worse for the wear. Well, I knew I had to prove myself. and It's a pretty big motivator. Uh, he points to the uh, cylinder in your hands and he says it looks to me as though you've had a very successful free agency and tell me what was your opinion of your companions I wouldn't be alive without them that may be true I imagine they would not be alive without you either I suppose teamwork keeps people alive it does make the dream work as I hear <laughs> I've heard that before weird well he holds out a massive clawed hand what is this tabernacle she heads it over he pulls it open and he says well let's just say it's a hint of knowledge and he pulls out the scroll and he sets it on the stage and he says it is the first spell that you will be inscribing in your new spell book it is the identify spell oh I've read about that it is extremely useful and he pushes the scroll towards you uh, and as he does that it seems as though they're floating but you as an arcane scholar know there are unseen servants carrying over parchment and quill and ink and he says for the rest of today you will spend your time inscribing the identifier spell for yourself to use it is going to be one of the most useful spells you have while in my tutelage thank you tabernacle you are welcome is there a reason it was hidden in illusory fire? I am pleased you saw through that. Had you not used detect magic, you might not have seen it so easily, in which you might have spent more time in the plane of shadow. And so I see you about in good spirits. You handled it very well. Could you see everything that was going on? Yes. How? Think... Just curious. Just curious. Uh, he kind of lifts a claw, and from within your cloak, you suddenly feel something round emerge, and then it reveals itself, and you see what looks like a floating eye. And is uh... and it is an arcane eye that he sent with you. I feel... I appreciate you looking out for me, but that feels kind of like an invasion of privacy. You were not to know it was there. Sure didn't. So long as you are my student and you are performing 
free agencies for me, Lorna. I need to see how you solve your problems. I understand. Just uh, histories made me a little nervous about being observed so closely. I understand. However, I need you to trust me. You are safe here. You are safe under my orders. You have paid the gold, and you shall receive the training. And I could not come with you myself. I needed you to behave as though you were unwatched. And so you did. Do okay. you understand? I understand. I will not use arcane eyes every time you are on a mission. But I will not tell you when I do. It's kind of a... Sure, like a secret shopper. Additionally, should you decide to investigate if you have an eye watching you, I am afraid your little detect magic spell is not enough to beat a dragon. I wouldn't have presumed as such, sir. <laughs> Tabernacle gives you a look like a draconic eyebrow raise. No, I'm serious. <clears throat> Very well. Well, you have work to do, don't you? Yes, sir. I'll get right to it. So, for the rest of this day, you spend, if you follow the orders, inscribing I do. Identify into your spellbook. And so you can add the identify spell to your spell list. If you Whoa! already if you already have identify selected. I do not. Okay. Never mind. Woohoo! Good spell. Don't even have to prepare it. That's true. You just now know it. <laughs> Did I level up? No. Oh. <laughs> You're still level one. Okay. You're gonna be level one for a little bit. Okay. You'll, you'll be okay. You're going to get a lot of spells to make up for it. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I figured as much. It's a good, good trade-off. And on that note, we come close. We basically hit the one hour and 40 minute mark, which is Ween's, uh, as this is a good note, unless there's something you'd like to do. Um, not particularly. She would go back to her room, make sure her book is still there. It is. And that's all she wants. Um, it seems as though your room is protected from invaders at this point. Because the room is exactly as you left it to the point that the dust looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. That makes her feel a lot better. She might even sleep soundly. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. But on that note... That is where we are going to stop tonight's session. Woohoo! Well done. You've impressed Tabernacle with how you solved that problem. I solved your squishy boneless man puzzle. You did. Very well done. <laughs> uh, no, Detect Magic made finding that cylinder much more, much easier. Than I actually didn't silvery barbs an, uh, a second hit on uh, Sagona because I only had one spell slot left and I wanted to use Detect Magic to find what I was looking for. Well done. Uh -huh. good I guess I could have virtually cast it. You could have. Then you would have spent I didn't, more time. Exactly. I didn't want to spend as much time as possible <laughs> in the so. fucking shadow fell. Well done. And we will continue in your adventure next week. Thank you for Ping. playing.